We have overcomplicated what it means to age well. Instead of embracing our food wisdom and understanding how to harness its power, we look to pills, potions, protocols, and powders for longevity. I'm here to change that. You already have this power on your plate. Every meal choice is an investment in your future self and in how you feel today. Think of it as compound interest. Every time you deposit in your bank of health, you'll feel the benefits today and later when you need it most. I'm going to tell you a story about why I care so deeply about this. This is my papa. He is a wonderful man. Loved tech, loved America. He lived here in the 80s and worked in the big boom internet. My papa also loved big American food, big American cars, and big American homes. Unfortunately, he became a statistic when he passed away at 63 from a diet-related chronic disease that you will all have heard of, colon cancer. Now, my mission is to make sure that we have less premature deaths from diet-related diseases, because nowadays, diet-related diseases are the leading cause of premature deaths. He didn't live to meet my children, but I hope that I will make a difference to their generation in preventing this from happening as much. So I'm a medical scientist by background. That means I have a PhD in clinical medical research, and I also have a master's in public health. What we have now is this opportunity where we have really good hygiene and sanitation, which used to kill us off all the time. We learned to wash our hands between delivering babies, and less women died in childbirth. We learned to wash our hands when preparing food, and we caught less pathogens that killed us. Then modern medicine came along, and suddenly we had antibiotics. Antibiotics which meant we didn't all die from, from normal bacterial infections, and vaccines that protected us against the most deadly viral infections. The missing piece now is our nutrition. We've lengthened our lives, but we have a huge health gap. We're living longer, but we're living more years in poor health, which, frankly, does anyone want to do that? No. So, what is really clear is that we need to approach nutrition with the same kind of energy and urgency that we had for hygiene and for medicines. 80% of premature deaths are caused by just four chronic health conditions. Lung disease, cancers, metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. But what's really amazing is that 80% of these premature deaths can be completely prevented with four simple lifestyle modifications. Don't smoke. Seems obvious, but we're still doing it. Reduce your alcohol intake. Drinking alcohol every day is not good for our health. Move your body every day in a way that you love and that makes you happy. And the most powerful one of all is change your diet. Eating more whole foods, plant-based, full of fiber, is by far the most evidence-based way to increase our health span. So we know all of this. The research isn't brand new. We've known for decades. There's plenty of public health advice. Eat your five a day. Make sure you're getting fruits and veg every day. Why isn't it working? Well, less than 1% of us are actually able to implement these public health strategies. Most of us aren't able to do all the things that we're told will help us to live longer by eating in a certain way. We clearly know that nutrients are beneficial. We know that certain foods support health. So what's blocking us? Why are we not able to stick to this plan? Well, our food environment is stacked right against us. It has nothing to do with our willpower or our ability to understand the information, it's because we are literally surrounded by foods that have been designed by industry to be hyper-palatable, which means that they're delicious, to not fill us up, which means we can eat more of them. They are high in fat, salt and sugar a lot of the time, and they have added chemicals which we frankly didn't evolve to actually break down or digest or absorb. So they're interacting with our bodies in ways that we just don't know. More than 50% of our daily energy intake comes from ultra-processed foods. In some population groups, so in young children, infants, and teens, it's as high as 72%. The vast majority of our diet is made up of foods that do nothing to support our health. All they do is line the food industry's pockets. 
But the good news is that when we look at the data, when we really look at all the countries, this study was done on 195 countries. And what the scientists here looked at was, what is it about diets that are really driving disease? What do we need to change here? And the good news is that the majority of the things that we need to change are adding things back onto our plate. What you can see from this graph is that diets low in whole grains, diets low in pulses, diets low in whole fruits, that's what's driving millions of deaths. We need to add these, plate, these foods back onto our plate to regain our health. So I'm not here to tell you to avoid all ultra-processed foods and stop eating the cake and don't have that soda anymore. I'm here to say, what can you add back onto your plate that's going to really support your health and your longevity? Because as soon as you add these foods back on, there'll be a lot less space on your plate for those foods that we know aren't doing anything to support us. And honestly, the most well-researched dietary pattern in the world is the Mediterranean diet. This is a pyramid that represents that. And what you can see here is that there's a majority of whole foods, lots of plants, nuts and seeds, and whole grains. There is water and herbal teas as the main drink. Ultra-processed foods don't feature on this pyramid. It's really important that we note that. There is a little bit of meat and fish if you want it, but the majority of the plate is made up of plants. And what's really cool about this pyramid is that it includes the most fundamentally joyous part of food, and that's conviviality, sharing our food with our loved ones. We evolved over millennia to spend our entire day hunting, gathering, preparing, and eating food together. That's literally what we did for a very long time. And we now live in an environment where we've completely removed this from the way we interact. So much so that people just grab and, grow that, grab and go their lunch. They drink their lunch. They don't even bother eating food anymore. We need to reclaim our food culture and take it as an opportunity to actually share beautiful moments with the people we love. It's the best way to show ourselves and others love eating food that really nourishes us. And so what actually happens if we do it? And is it too late? Some people here in the audience might be like, well, it's cool if you're in your 20s, but what happens later? This modeling study clearly shows us that when we improve our diet, even just a little bit, away from our baseline, which you may have heard the acronym Standard American Diet, SAD, that's where we are at the moment. <laughs> when we actually just improve a little bit, we gain lots of life years. If we manage to get to the Eat Well guides, we increase even more. And right at the top, if we actually manage to follow the Mediterranean dietary pattern advice, we can gain up to 11 years when we make this change at 40, and up to six years if you make the change at 70. My favorite case study is this wonderful woman, my mum. She was in a terrible state of health after my father passed away. She'd spent his last years looking after him and had really, really neglected herself. Her gut health was so terrible that she had to have part of her colon removed. And when I took her under my care, and that is no mean feat to look after your own parent, we transformed her relationship with food. She feared so many foods. She was so scared of eating fiber-rich foods because of her colon illness. Now she is thriving. Her mental health is so much better. She loves food. She eats more than I do. She eats all the plants. And she is so happy, and all of her cardiometabolic risk factors and markers have gone down. She could stop her statins. Her blood pressure returned to normal. So I'm hoping that she will stick around for a lot longer. So how do we actually do this stuff? This is the Canadian Eat Well plate. It's very clear. More than half of our plates should be made up of whole plants. Then you have space for whole grains. How many people in this room eat whole grains every day? OK. When I say whole grains, I don't mean whole grain pasta or brown rice. I mean spelt, buckwheat, quinoa, barley, foods that we've completely forgotten about. I still eat them every day. Very good, very rare. So we need to be able to add 30 plants every day. We want to feed our gut microbiome, and we'll get onto what that is in a second. Fermented foods are nature's probiotics. We spend billions every year buying capsules with probiotics in them. Fermented foods offer us so much more than anything that we've put in a tablet. Eat the rainbow. It's a really old Instagram handle, but it's true. Each color in our fruits and veg is a different polyphenol. These powerful plant chemicals that support our health and reduce inflammation. Think fiber first. You heard here already. 
that we obsess over protein so much, but actually what 95% of us in this room are deficient in is fiber. We're not reaching the minimum recommended amount of 30 grams a day. Most of, our, most of us actually get about 18 grams a day, which is what's recommended for a four-year-old. So we have some work to do. And finally, do try to reduce ultra-processed foods. As I mentioned, if you add all these things in, the reduction in ultra-processed foods will be a pie product. But learn how to look out for them, read the ingredients labels, and where you can, just don't buy them. Now I want to take you to the future of nutrition. We know all the basics. Let's try and get this started. But what happens when we look at genetic clones, identical twins, and how they react to food differently? Here you can see Hugo and Ross. They have eaten exactly the same food in this experiment, but they have very different blood glucose responses. So if genetics doesn't answer why this is happening, these guys also live together. They have very similar height, weight, metabolic health. What's going on here? The gut microbiome is the future, and it is so exciting. In this room, we share more than 99% of our DNA. We're all like fifth cousins, statistically. But we don't share any more than 30% of our gut microbes. Our gut microbiome composition is as unique as our fingerprint. These trillions of microbes that line our colons produce chemicals for us that are like mini personal pharmacies. They impact our mood, they impact our health, our heart health, everything. So how do we think about our gut microbiome? We think about it as a garden. If we don't look after it, it'll look like a really sad, barren garden. We need to let it thrive with lots of diverse plants, lots of flowers. This is the kind of ecosystem we want to foster inside our guts. The result is that we get benefits across our body, across different functions. It's amazing to see how many systems are implicated by the effect of the gut microbiome. When we put this personalized nutrition into practice, and we give it to people in their homes and ask them to change their diets in the middle of their busy lives, what happens is a randomized controlled trial that was published on the front cover of Nature Medicine. It's so monumental to see how much of an impact on cardiometabolic health markers, but crucially on mood, energy, and sleep quality, feeling better now and improving your markers for long-term health. So I urge you to create your own health environment and become your own health architect. Rome wasn't built in a day, but if you take these five tips and make sure that you surround yourself with a food environment that you want to see. Don't forget that if you don't buy the food, they can't sell it to you. Use your spending power to buy whole foods and plant foods. And finally, I want to share my life card with you. You may have seen this before. What this card shows is 10 years per line. I'm 37, so those green dots are my life lived so far. I was born in Italy in the 80s, so my predicted life expectancy is 78. Those golden dots is what I hope to add to my life expectancy by eating the way that I do. And let me tell you that even if I don't get those extra 10 years of life, enjoying food, using food as our best ally for health means that you'll certainly enjoy it in the meantime. Thank you.